Hey, welcome to Mexico. I'm uh, Gene. I'm retired here. And if you've uh, not been on the channel, we ask one question, which is, do they write them and sing them like they used to? A lot of people, young and old, think the old music is better, but I'm not so sure. And today we're going to do something a little different. We're going to look at a guy named uh, Larnell Lewis. And yesterday I knew nothing about him. Okay. And I watched this video last night, so this is going to be a second reaction for me. Sorry about that, guys, but it was so good. And I really thought about it because I had just watched this video by uh, Rick Beato, and I don't think he needs an introduction. He's got, what, three million viewers or something? But he did this video, uh, Jimi Hendrix Wouldn't Be Famous Today. Let me play just a little bit of it, okay? Just so you get the idea. What Interview that I did with Jeff about. Berlin, famous bassist, back in May of 2017. And something he said just came back to me because it was really profound. So I went and hunted down that spot in the video. And this is what he said. Musicians owned the music industry in the 70s. And we did, just because if you could play just if you could play, you're a star. Today, that doesn't count, really, for the most part. But today's industry barely, it seems to me, pays attention to the great players. I mean, I'm utterly and absolutely convinced that if Jimi Hendrix came along today, no one would notice him. What he's saying is that players are not statement. valued like they were in the 70s. And this isn't an old man yells at clouds. This is a trying to put things in historical perspective. For myself, I make these videos really to try and sort things out in my mind. So I started thinking of all the players that became famous in the 70s. Let me just list a few people that... So he's gonna list everybody you could imagine, but you know, this uh, idea here that, the, uh, that, that no one cares about players anymore, I just find that uh, uh, kind of uh, shocking and um, it doesn't seem like it, but here's this guy, Larnell Lewis, and I was watching, this is on a channel called Drumeo, and oh my God, this was amazing. So this would be my second reaction to this. And the reason I'm bringing this up, you know how many views this has? 10 million, 10 million people have watched this video. And yesterday I didn't know anything about it. It's a little bit long, maybe 15 minutes, but I hope you're as amazed as I was. Uh, this is him listening to Metallica's Enter Sandman for the very first time. And uh, then he's going to try to pick it up and play it. And this guy is amazing. Check this out. Make this a little bigger. So I wanted to find something similar only this time. I wanted to play a style I am not known for playing, metal. So to do this, Davis challenged me with what he says is one of the most popular metal songs of all time that I actually haven't heard before. Sorry, guys. Um, it's Enter Sandman by Metallica. And I know what you are thinking. There's no way I haven't heard this song before, but I'm not lying when I say I've never heard or played this tune in my life. So, <laughs> I'm gonna take a listen and I'm gonna give it a try. Are you ready? Because I'm not. But either way, here we go. It's a whole different kind of reaction channel, I'll take right? My volume. It's interesting. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure you all know the song. I'm assuming it's one, two, three, four. A little more volume. Okay. Got some guys amazing. going on. I'm glad I got two, uh, a tom and a half. <laughs> there was an upbeat on that crash before. Okay. Probably again. Okay, there's two shots and then it's three. Right, uh, with a snare, okay. He's listening to one of my no, favorite drummers. All right. I love Lars Oler. Bill. A push. 
big hi hats. Right, and the push. Still open hi hats, okay. I know this is a 90s song, I know that. Oh, halftime vibe, wow. <laughs> Build. And we stay in that new key. Okay, I guess it's a pre-chorus. Wow. Oh. Okay, so it's a shorter chorus. And we'll go back to the main theme. Wow. Sounds like double around the interlude. Hmm. Just watching his face. Amazing. Kill it. Right. Right. The halftime will get you. Oh. Interesting. Oh. Okay, third time around in that shot, I gotta go leave some silence and go to Tom's. This takes a special right, kind of person. Crashes. Okay. <laughs> Amazing. Seems like the crashes are around the vocal. In your closet, in your head. Down beat. Right, the bass drum first before the up crash. Right. Oh, double chorus, even though it's shortened. Okay. <laughs> right. And then we're gonna. So I hope they I hope they don't block this, but we'll see. And I know this song's been played to death. Ooh, I'ma miss that. take a quick review here yeah you better <laughs> so I know that there was some hi-hats in the beginning on the I'm assuming that was maybe twice around that feels like a good length but I can't remember um, after we do that twice I'm assuming that we go back to the toms or we go to the toms make it feel big I think it was just like a quarter note bass drum. I think it was happening on the kick. It was something like that. 
uh, we were hanging out there, and then there was some kind of a cue. Maybe it was a drum fill, which means it's on me to play. Something was happening, and then we got into that other section. We're just, we're just open hi hat. So it's probably even all the way around if we're thinking song form and something that feels comfortable to listen to. And then when we get into the verse, we're rocking. And the theme, in terms of uh, being able to hit those upshots, what I was hearing was slamming on the bass drum, not slamming, but hitting the bass drum on the downbeat in order to catch any ups, right? Uh, the one tricky thing, or at least thing that caught me off guard, was the halftime. I didn't expect that. I didn't expect the halftime, and I think it probably happens three times, if I remember correctly. And then out of that halftime, <laughs> Somehow, which I can't remember at the moment, we go back and we go to the chorus. Uh, we go to the chorus. Sounds like dun, 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 music dun, is its own language. Dun, 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 completely dun, unique. And I think we go to the interlude twice, mm. right? Let me know in the comments. How am I doing? Okay, um, and of course we go to the verse, we do the chorus, similar thing. Um, we go, I think we go into a guitar solo at that point, and then we do the modulation. I think we do the halftime. I can't remember the halftime was twice. There was something about the form at that part. Once we got past the guitar solo. Good luck, right? I feel like there was an interlude where there was speaking and some crash hits at some point. I can't remember if it was a chorus and then that interlude, or if it was the interlude and then we went to a couple of choruses. Uh, what do you think? Should I listen again? Or should I just hop on it and see what happens? <laughs> Let me uh, phone a friend. Dave. Yo, what's up, buddy? Uh, Help me out here. Should I should I listen again or should I just try a pass? Let's do a pass, man. Yeah, let's try a pass. Yeah, All right. Do a pass. Okay, you're a good friend, man. <laughs> um, okay, let's make it happen. <laughs> and I believe this is his second run through. I think he explains that at the end, but I'm, I was unclear if it was first pass or second pass, but either way. Love those cameras. Overhead and feet. He's in the pocket. Amazing.
just love his drums. Get that thunder on the toms. <laughs> he's smiling because he's he's going home. He's going home now. Coda. I hear a little bit of jazz now. Thanks. Thanks. That was take two of Enter Sandman. Yeah. So there's a little more chatter another minute or so if you want to watch that on your own. But, you know, it's a 90s song, okay? So, you know, we're trying to do 21st century music. But just this whole thing, this dialogue, and, you know, is, is Rick right or is he wrong? And, of course, one thing about music. I always pick on a band like Arcade Fire, which is nothing like what we watched here, but Arcade Fire never solos, right? It's all about the song and everybody playing as an ensemble. And that's a new trend in the 21st century. So in a way, maybe it's not a fair comment. And in another way, when I show a video like this, it's just anecdotal. It's one video, right? It doesn't mean that the whole world, but I've been reading your comments, uh, about the playing of some of the bands we've been hitting up, about how good the musicianship is. And, and I just don't believe that we don't care about players anymore. Uh, though I, don't, I do think he's still making a good point. You know, I mentioned Arcade Fire. So there's definitely a, a new aesthetic in music. Uh, solos were just done to death in the, uh, especially in the 70s, I think. And there's been a reaction to that, right? But it doesn't mean that people don't play and that there aren't stars. So I, I watch a number of channels, uh, uh, different things, and I see young guys still talking about the musicianship and naming names. People are still talking about anybody from the prior century or this century and about how good their musicianship is. So. I just wanted to have this conversation and I would love to see your comments. 
Uh, like I say, something a little different today, not the typical hit up a song from the 21st century. Uh, but the thing about this kind of a reaction channel where you have a drummer listening to a song once and then playing it in this astounding fashion, this can only happen on the internet, right? So I think we're creating stars in a different way and 10 million views. That's phenomenal, phenomenal. So this guy is a internet star and we all know things go viral, they blow up and there's stars on TikTok and other platforms. Rick would know that, so you know, obviously he's, uh, you know, he's got that in the back of his mind. Uh, so I think he both makes a good point and doesn't make a good point. I, I, I think it's a debatable topic. And I wanted to share this video with you guys. I just think this is, like I say, I watched this last night for the f first time, and now I'm watching it for the second time, and it was just as entertaining the second time. And I am blown away by this guy, Larnell Lewis. Never heard of him. Uh, I think I'm going to go to Wiki after this video and, and see who he's played with before. Obviously a young man and boy his ability to to listen, his deep listening that he has and the way that he talked it back when he did a review. I think that review part was the most amazing when he was trying to remember everything about that song. I, I could certainly never do this and it's uh, it, it's an amazing kind of talent and I think we're just making new stars in a new way and, uh, and, we, and we don't necessarily do it through record albums or even concerts but I think we do it through the internet so let me know let me know what you think I'm just really curious I, I think you guys care about players and here we are, Larnell Lewis. All right. So as we say here in Mexico, buen dia.